to the science of life. And boy, if you can't see what's being rolled out today right here, and let me read a little bit more from the science of life, 1931 H.G. Wells. And this is going to be from page 1475. We have already, if this account of mental processes is sound, the gradual appearance of what we may call synthetic superminds in the species Homo sapiens, into which individual consciousness tend to merge themselves. 19. 31. And again, when we go back to the esoteric agendas, and there has to be a world encyclopedic mind, and that has to kind of be trained. By... Okay. These super individual organisms have taken from the form of creeds, communities, cultures, churches, states, classes, and such like accumulations of mentality. They have grown and interacted in the history of these species very like the complexities, the complexes of an individual human mind. Again, the beehive, the supermind, the supercomputer, the singularity. They have grown and interacted in the history of the species, very like the complex complexes of an individual human mind. They seem to have now under current conditions a ruling disposition to coalesce. They seem to be heading towards an ultimate unification into a collective human organism. And let me just pause there. That was this elite's plan, as bizarre as it seems to in the 20th century, um, you know, order out of chaos, the alchemical process of bashing to purify, to move from one thing into another. Um, World War One, World War II, the world order system. It's designed about a, a Malthusian arrangement of uh, inter eugenics international so that it could control the political, economic, cultural uh, order of all other sub-political organizations in order to have this final transcendence here. So we really have to move from his open conspiracy into the science of life to put this blueprint all into place and see what's rolling out around us. They seem to have now, under current conditions, a ruling disposition to coalesce. They seem to be heading towards an ultimate unification into a collective human organism whose knowledge and memory will be all science and all history, which will synthesize the pervading will to live and reproduce into a collective purpose of continuation and growth. This sounds like about two thirds of the science fiction films that have come out in the last century. Upon that creative organization of thought and will, the continuing succession of conscious individual lives, drawing upon and adding to its resources will go on. At the end of our vista of progressive mental development of mankind stands the promise of man with a capital N. So we're not only talking about the project of humanism and the renaissance of man par excellence to replace religion, because when we're talking about man, we're talking about Kabbalah, that the that God doesn't exist. He is in everything and everything is shattered into a million pieces, but that master race that can collect and train all human elements on that collective whole, man becomes God, but... Uh, after massive depopulation, there's only so many people left, the master class and these essentially robotic class that remains. Um, at the end of our vista of the progress, mental development of mankind stands the opposition, the promise of man with a capital M, God-man, apotheosis, consciously controlling his own destinies and the destinies of life upon this planet. Page 475. Please read that again. That's the plan. That's what's happening right now. And you can go to another, a lot of other sources, and they're saying the same thing slightly differently, but this is quite succinct. This is what's happening right now. And a combination of reading um, The Open Conspiracy, which has essentially been played out. It, you know, it's been repackaged under the United Nations instead of the World Eugenics um, 
dictatorship, but it's the United Nations each and every day through trade agreements and everything else, each nation slowly in a more obvious way giving up its sovereignty, but that was really given up essentially 100 years ago plus. Um, the dead weight, here we have it, the dead weight of inferior populations may overpower the constructive few. So that's why the depopulation, that's why the Malthusian plan, that's why I go into the Kabbalan, that there's these gradations, and you have to go back to Theosophy and Madame Blavatsky, that there are these gradations, This they think of themselves as this post-Atlantean messianic kind of cabal, um, but they have to shave off, as Margaret Sanger would say, or Bertrand Russell would say, or Henry Kissinger would say, you have to kind of get rid of these human weeds because they're weighing us down in this cosmic scheme. We have to ascend and we have to get through our ascension. We have to get rid of this dead weight. And what he's saying here, he's just revealing the plan. It's been, it's been part of the great work. It's been there for before Plato. And this was what Plato discusses. You have to be willing to dupe people, rig the system to eliminate some, to get that ideal, um, it's, it exists in this Kabbalistic Platonic form, but now we realize it and gain our ascension. So the dead weight of the inferior population may overpower the constructive few. So it's not everybody that's gonna kind of pull these parts together to become God. Um, chop some, do some chopping along the way. Or, the incalculable run of climactic changes may turn harshly against them. Um, and that's what um, people like Shaw would say that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you either get with the program or you're eliminated. Um, or the incalculable run of climactic change may turn harshly against him. Strange epidemics depopulation, right? Under, you can call it AIDS, um, famine, um, or whether, whatever epidemic, um, they'll, they'll be devised. Bertrand Russell, will, I'll talk about Bertrand Russell. He's very explicit, you know, and sometimes there's limitations to these methods. War in the past have been an effective means of depopulation, or as Kissinger would also say, but we have to step it up here in this final stage. Um, epidemics may arise too swift and deadly for his still very imperfect medical science to save him from extirpation. So that's a nice way of pretty much saying that whether it's war, epidemics, a weather catastrophe, we control them all. We're just waiting um, for word from the other side, and I'm sorry this sounds strange, but just look at the recent conversation about D waves. We're waiting for the conversation from the other side because the project has an interdimensional component. So um, I'll continue reading from H.G. Wells on the other side. Thank you. <laughs>